Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. In today's video I have something different for you, it's not a website review, it's not a tutorial, it is a chat with a creative front-end developer Arno Tanielian from New York, Frenchman living in New York and we had a chat over the weekend, we reviewed a website, originally we wanted to review a website and talk about creative front-end development in general but while we were reviewing the site, something went wrong with the audio. So the first part of the interview is not really up for the scratch when it comes to the audio. And I value your time. I value your audio experience. And that's why we're cutting off the first half of the interview. And obviously, I'll show you the website that we reviewed, which is the iabellinteriors.com from the Exo Ape team in Netherlands. We've spoke about with Arno about the effects on this side, like the page transition, some of the lotty animations. Okay, so we'll do the deconstruction in another video, but I still think there are some golden nuggets in the talk that we had after we reviewed the site. Let's firstly dive into the introduction. Hello, Arno, how are you? Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. So for you, for new to the channel, or Arno is new to the channel as well, so I want to make sure that I introduce him. Arno is a technical director at Work & Co, which is a digital agency in New York, and formerly also at Sting Studios, again, another big agency, another sort of famous agency when it comes to creative coding. And that's when I think I came up across Arno on Twitter when they were doing these cool Spotify projects a couple of years ago. And uh, yeah, that's where I came across some, some of your amazing work. So welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Of course. Um, so my name is Arno. Uh, I'm French. Uh, so you rapidly hear that with my broken accent. Um, but yeah, I've been working for uh, about 10, 12 years now. Um, been working in Paris for about two years. Then uh, I traveled a little bit and worked as a freelancer from Canada and Australia. Actually, I lived a little yes. bit in so you, you went uh, there for a bit, right? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I lived on St. Kilda uh, for a few months uh, and it was awesome. I really loved it. Um, but yeah, during that time, uh, I worked with a lot of uh, cool little studio, mostly Parisian studios, such as um, Soleil Noir, which doesn't exist anymore. But then I worked with uh, Mercy Michel, with Anonymous, uh, with a lot of cool uh, people on very nice website. When I started, it was Flash, but then quickly evolved into what we have right now. Uh, so a lot of JavaScript, obviously, uh, a lot of very nice animated website. And then about six years ago now, I moved to New York. Uh, I worked at Sting Studios for about five years. Um, and now for the past year, I've been at Work & Co as a technical director. This was the introduction, as I mentioned, after that we went to the browser, we reviewed the site, but the audio wasn't good enough. So we're chopping it off and we're picking up the discussion in the questions where we were talking about how many people we think works on projects like this. Um, so I would say at least two, three, uh, those kind of websites, five pages, um, that's the kind of project I was able to take alone when I was a freelancer. And I mean, depends on the, the, the studio, the agency, it's known to be very aggressive, usually in terms of timeline. Those kind of stuff. Not saying this is the good way of doing it, but as by experience, those kind of website, I would say, it can go very easily between like ten days, something like that. Even though honestly, it would deserve more time, but um, a minimum of ten days with the experience. When you have your starter ready, when you have your your habits like the routing, uh, you know you you know how to deal with the loading. Uh, library, this kind of stuff can come quickly. Um, but otherwise, I would say, yeah, it's a 10 days, 15 days uh, web time for one developer. I don't think you can be two people, uh, two developers, if you can go faster. But when you look at the pages themselves, there's not a lot of integration work. It's mostly around uh, design and animation and all this kind of stuff. So usually this it's not that it's better to work on, but it's hard to divide the work on that single page, right? Yeah. Um, so something like, yeah, 10 to 15 days. As to convince the, the, the clients, I mean, the, the, 
I think the the, the end result uh, speaks for by itself, right? Um, and I think at the end of the day, you would work with people and clients that would like to do those kind of work, I guess. Um, so for me personally, um, I was able, I had the chance when I was a freelancer to be able to say no to stuff that I didn't like and yes to the stuff I really wanted to work on. Uh, and then work in companies where the work I was presented was mostly good. Obviously, there was sometimes stuff <laughs> not enjoyable to work on, like everyone. Um, but where where maybe the timeline wasn't there, but at least uh, the good people, talented people, and uh, the good project were here. Um, so I would say, yeah, if you if you if you have the occasion, uh, work the craft um, on your own. I would say to at least practice and and come up with those skills uh, of code-wise or design-wise, uh, just to be able to work on this kind of project. And then I think it's just a matter of relationship, right? It's just a matter of being connected with the, the, the good guys, and then you will be connected with the good projects. I think this is how this kind of stuff works. Yeah, no, it's, I think that's perfect dance for And I think, yes, if you get the first client that, that actually appreciates all these creative coding and, and creative projects, then he would refer you to other brand or other clients or other of their friends. So it's sort of getting the first one out there and then it sort of spreads and attracts the right people and they would give you the right projects. Oops. Exactly. Doesn't happen very often that someone rings me when I'm recording video. <laughs> <So good. laughs> but it happens, doesn't matter. Yeah, so that's definitely do one project and then uh, of course that brings the next one and, and then you being you end up being a creative front end developer and someone actually asked me that uh, what is the, what is the, what is the next thing to to learn in terms of okay i don't want to be just this stock stock uh, designer or developer to build templates and and reuse templates and and getting something for the, let's say for the wordpress side or any other any other engine that you can just simply get a template and you don't you don't really become a developer you you just re-implementing reintegrating things so what would you say is what would you say as an advice to someone who wants to be a little bit more creative who wants to who wants to learn some to do websites like these the ones you did on spotify the the ones where are a little bit more they hand coded all the time they, because they're so unique there is no there's no 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 space for template in these things because they 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 so unique and also they they ha, they they handcrafted by a developer you know what I mean so what what is this thing what do you what do you think is the skill set that people need to know or should know if they want to become creative coders to be able to work on projects like this yeah um, I think what you mentioned earlier is very essential um, being able to kind of like the, the first time when you're not into this and, and you don't really know where to start. I think the first thing is to kind of like follow those people who actually do this kind of work, see exactly those, those kind of um, like your your show, like being able to see how it's behind the scenes um, and be able to practice, right? At the beginning, we all worked hard. Uh, we all did our best. We all did extra hours without having to work all the time, all the time. But like, I think at the beginning, especially you have to get into the weeds and, and trying to understand and how it works. So I would say, I mean, my advice would be to surround yourself um, as a developer. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm not a designer at all. Like it's not the kind of stuff I would come up with. So just surrounding yourself with people that are really good at what they're doing, uh, design-wise, motion-wise, just try to get into who's good and who wants to do a good portfolio. This is why you see also a lot of portfolio on awards and FWA and this kind of stuff because it's a service to service, right? I call your portfolio, you design mine. Um, so you get like those kind of like two projects out of the box where you don't have a real client. Obviously you need to, to know that person and make sure that you, you know, you know, you're actually gonna make something that looks nice. Um, but I think it's a good way to start. Like this is how also I started just like doing uh, someone else portfolio and then someone else design my portfolio uh, and I, I had to get into the, the, the weeds of it. Um, and if I had to, to also give an advice is to not jump into view or react or those kind of big stuff, but just like, kind of like really understanding the basics, right? Just like basically HTML, CSS, JavaScript, go to the basics, understand what's the server, um, what is HTML at the core, semantically speaking, accessibility, 
uh, looking at what is the CSS, CSS critical, uh, looking at the JavaScript, okay, JavaScript is just here to add some interactivity to just do those actually page transition. So it doesn't have to be this huge, huge, uh, you know, big machinery behind the scenes just to display three images and one text. Um, you want a website to be smooth, you want a website to be performance, and most of it, you want to control what's happening. And the best way to do so is just to start with the basics, you just start with JavaScript, how to interact with an element, query an element, just be able to then play with the stars. Then you're going to start playing around with libraries uh, like JSAP, uh, being able then to, to do some kind of animations. And again, when you don't have any ideas, just work with a designer. It's going to come up with a nice little design, just like nice animation. This is how I learned easing. This is how I learned timing. And slowly, you're going to start having some, you know, you see stuff over and over again. And then you're going to start having those little reflexes of, um, OK, I see a scaling here. I see, OK, here I can do a nice transition with this easing. Um, which immediately, just, it's not every time the same thing, as you mentioned. It's, this is why I think we like this job. It's because when you work in a creative uh, environment, um, every websites are different. Uh, and as a developer, you have also your creative input. It's not because I'm not a designer and I suck at designing that I don't have creative ideas. Um, and also working with uh, all those very talented people, you 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 then you, you know you're part of the game after, and and um, it just becomes easier for you. And then you have your little way of working, and you just then you're gonna have new relationships, good and new other people, and then so you're gonna get introduced to other cool projects. So I would say at the beginning, yeah, it's about it's about a lot of uh, knowing people, uh, working, obviously, probably harder at the beginning. You always have to work hard, but, um, and so especially be curious. Um, it's about looking at what other people are doing, um, being able to share your work, ask questions, be curious, um, and it's just gonna, you know, from there, you're just gonna do anything you want. Yeah, I, th I think you nailed it uh, really well with the be curious because Obviously, I'm a self-taught developer. I don't know about you. You probably went, not probably, you definitely went to a proper school with with the education, which is another way how you can get into the industry. But for me, it's it's I'm a self-developer. I'm a self, self-taught self developer where I'm just curious. I, I like to look at sites, look at projects, look at frameworks, how they were done, how they were built. And um, that's, that's how I learn. I need to pull the code in, break it, see how it works. And... That's how I land, and I think I think being curious is the biggest thing. Otherwise, you would not stay in the industry for too long because if you're no. not curious, you you it's it's so hard to keep up to date. But I'm curious. In my free time, I'll just open a framework I've never worked with. I open it up, play with it, see see the benefits, see what 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 what's fast with that framework, what's not, and uh, that's that's how you sort of shape up your knowledge and. Uh, so I think definitely my advice to someone who tries to get into the creative coding, just be curious, like you said, be curious about 3JS if you want to get to Canvas and animations, be curious about the SVG animations, GSAP. You need to be curious, open it every every day. You're working a little bit on that skill and every day you're learning something new. So for example, if I go back to GSAP, they have a great forum where you can ask questions, but also just browsing through others' questions you come across code pens that will show you how to do specific things. And over time, you can refer back to them and you sort of shape up the knowledge based on reading someone else's questions, you know what I mean? So there is so much so much to obviously digest. And But one thing I wanted to point out as well, that a lot of these websites of the day and award-winning websites, they they very simple in terms of the stack. They, they don't have the biggest frameworks behind it. They don't have the biggest... Uh, CMS behind it. Sometimes they are just static websites because they are portfolio. They're not pulling data from from microservices. That it's usually pre-rendered, so you can forget about the, the complexity of working with APIs and bringing content in, and just focus on the creative side because you don't have the you don't have to worry about the technicality of yes, as I said, bringing a lot of APIs, connecting them, integrating them. And I think you mentioned it as well when we looked at this website was 
that there is no integration work. The content is there, comes from the CMS, and you show it on the page. There is one, maybe one Ajax call or one fetch call just to get the data, but that's it. There is no other sort of too technical work, and then the rest of it is just the creative animations, polishing, and working with the designer, making sure that it turns out really well. So I think there was, there was a good point to be curious, and that's how you learn the most. Yeah, no, and even regarding the education, um, I had the chance to go to a very good school in Paris uh, at Dublin, uh, but I learned a lot from uh, teachers, but I mostly learned from my friends. Uh, and it's honestly those hours of, you know, just sitting down next to someone and just pair coding and then, oh, did you see that? How look is this? And, you know, like the best way is just to practice and if you can enjoy what you do, uh, you don't even realize that you're working. So uh, honestly, the best advice is really to, 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 as you said, to be curious, to get out there and don't be afraid. Like it's not because you're seeing something that it looks very complex and hard and oh my God, how am I gonna do this? A, if you see something like this, usually it's not someone alone who does that. Like there's always a team behind it. It's not just someone figuring out everything. And B is just experience. We all started somewhere. Uh, we didn't start by making the website of the year. Um, so yeah, don't be afraid by starting doing some little cut pens at first, then a portfolio and getting out there. There's no, there's nothing bad as long as you are curious and you share your work. Like it's, it's awesome. There's an awesome community out there. Yep. And uh, the one thing you actually mentioned as well, and I 100% agree as well, I like to work on things that look good. So to connect yourself with a good designer, it, it, it's the first step because yes, you said at least there is at least two or three people. So behind the, the website we've just looked at, there is there was there is a team of three people, the animator, the designer and the, the creative coder. And uh, so if you just if it's yourself as a coder and someone who designs it nicely, you are halfway there. And uh, the collaboration you, after a while, you know what what looks good and you can also chip in with your knowledge and shape up the design. Not You will not design it. It will still be a responsibility of the designer. But you can sort of skill up in the design sense and see what, what looks good. Yeah, so I think I think we've uh, covered quite a lot today. And I actually enjoyed this conversation. I think it was good. We had some technical issues, to be honest, with, with the sound. We'll definitely publish it. But I definitely enjoyed the second part when we were just talking because it was it was clear. I don't know. You legend, thanks for thanks again for coming on, and I'll definitely have you in the future. Future reviews will will review other websites. So if you're watching and you have a suggestion for the next reviews, let us know in the comments, and also give us some feedback on this interview. Did you enjoy it? Was there anything you would ask to cover next time? And we'll do it in the next episode. So thanks, Arno, for joining me. Thank you. I'll catch you in the next episode. Thank you for having me. See you soon. There you have it. That was a little bit of chopped off interview with Arno Tanielian. And I'll definitely have Arno in a future episode. So if there is uh, things you would like us to cover, definitely let me know in the comments. And of course, if you enjoying these videos, make sure you hit the like button, you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any other future videos. Until then, happy coding. Bye.